Sam, in many ways, you were drawing from personal experiences for this show. In what ways did it make that an easier or harder storytelling process? I mean, my show, because I grew up with that community, like, you know, most of my friends were coders, mm -hmm. and some, some were hackers, and I even tried to dabble in it. I, I just ripped a lot of their characteristics <laughs> off uh -huh. and just put them in my characters. And it, it got eerie uh, a lot of times. And also, uh, there's a fine line there because there are real hackers out there, and mm -hmm. if you don't do that respectfully, mm -hmm. they could retaliate. Mm -hmm. and, are you afraid of that? That would scare absolutely. me almost more than anything yeah, else. Absolutely. Oh my God, yeah. <laughs> Every day. And, <laughs> but so far, knock on wood, they've, they've actually liked the show. I'm not saying anything new. We all know why we do this. Not because Hunger Games books makes us happy, but because we want to be sedated. Because it's painful not to pretend. Because we're cowards. Society. The thing that I'm scared about is, are we showing it in, the, in, in an authentic way? Mm -hmm. Are people going to, is it going to land with people mm -hmm. or is it gonna feel exploitive? Mm -hmm. are, are we, you know, are we, but I think it's always important to bring up, I mean, if you're not saying something, then what's the point, you know what I mean? If you're not gonna do that every, so I was basically scared every episode because I think every episode we tried to say something uh -huh. about something, but. It, I was just nervous that people were going to take it the wrong way, or mm -hmm. wasn't, or we didn't do our jobs in articulating our point well enough. But I always love taking the risk anyway, you know. Mm -hmm. I'd love to talk about the casting process. What are the stories you guys have about trying to convince actors and find actors to take on roles that aren't necessarily likable characters? It's it's weird because you try and just not ever have that be part of the conversation. And honestly, one of the things that I do is we, I you know. And I think everybody here probably does when you cast, in person at least, you you ask some questions, you start to get to know them a little bit. What did you ask Rami? I mean, Rami was a relative <laughs> unknown. I mean, he was... He, he was shaking. I mean, mm -hmm. he, he literally said the, the script breeds anxiety. It was nerve wracking and I was like, I don't know, is he, is he gonna get through this audition? <laughs> I don't even, I, 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 and then he did the, and by that point we had seen maybe a hundred guys uh -huh. mm. and it was not right. Uh -huh. and it, and it was the fuck society speech, yep. mm -hmm. and it felt didactic, and, it felt, and I was like, this is terrible, I've written, we gotta yeah. call USA, cancel this, <laughs> this is not good. Yeah. But the thing that Rami told, told me is like, he loved all the jagged edges of this character. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, mm. You know, the other thing is, about, especially with TV, in particular with TV, you don't want to cast an asshole. As yeah. good as they yeah. might be, yeah. if they're an asshole, I really do not want to work with and that person. And every single person at this table has cast an asshole. Yes. Oh, yeah. And then yeah. you have to live with that. More than one. Oh, yeah. yes. so if you want to cast an asshole, some of them turn into <laughs> 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 What are the things you guys hear no to? The things that you just can't do on these shows? If standard practices came to me, and again, we had F-bombs everywhere, <laughs> all sorts of things. They would say, you can't say this on air. And I'll say, okay, we'll drop the audio out. Because I knew on online we would, you know, on iTunes yeah. we'll have it. And eventually they caught on that I was just like, okay, fine, we'll drop the audio out. And then they wound up just starting to be more lenient because they knew I would just mm. drop the audio anyway. and then yeah. throughout the episode they'd have all these audio dropouts. <laughs> <laughs> and, um, but it, but I mean I think to me it's like rather than pussyfooting around what people sure. would actually say. So what are the what are the shows that that inspired you um, as as storytellers? I mean whether it was as children, whether it was sort of later, more recently. I watched probably more movies than uh -huh. TV growing up, but Twin Peaks oh, be because yeah, because it was it was like. The, it was a mystery. It wasn't the same episode every week. Mm -hmm. It was definitely mm -hmm. a continuation. And I don't, I, I, I mean, as a kid, I don't remember having that feeling with any other show where yeah. I was like, wait a minute, I'm essentially just l watching a really, really long movie by mm -hmm. right. a feature filmmaker, you mm -hmm. know, who I happen to really love. So like that, that, and then, and the, and the mystery about it, like there was just something about drawing out this mystery mm. because I, I, I just, and, and so to, to even on that, on that note, it's Twilight Zone was Twilight also Zone. yeah, because yeah. it just it just made you like kind of lean into the TV, sure. mm. uh, uh, you know, as you're watching. It, it, it's the very definition of I want to know what happens next. Uh -huh. Hi, I'm Sam Esmo. I'm the showrunner of Mr. Robot, and uh, thanks for watching. Subscribe to watch more videos on the Hollywood Reporter. Well, you guys dropped the biggest, one of my favorite F-bombs of all time. Yeah, we got the MF-bomb. Yeah, yeah, the MF-bomb. Yeah, no, like, we would get our letters. <laughs>